really think those are cool? They're so bad. They're not cool. They're not cool at all. All right. 888 You brought up Moses Moody. Yeah, yeah. Moses, I'm, I'm going to set this up real quick, real quick, because Moses Moody. Um, but I just want to play the Lake of Sound one more time about pods, and then let's get to Moses Moody. But what do people feel about this? The owner to go to St. Warriors, Joe Lacob. We all love Joe Lacob. He don't run away from a microphone even when they're losing. He's been on a podcast. He talked on a podcast. We didn't even get into everything about the podcast. He had something on Draymond Green that I do want to get to later in the show. But here's what he said about pods last night, the Summer League game, in which the Warriors, they're 6-0 in Summer League. Six and oh. He was a revelation, to be quite honest. I mean, he's one of the, what, all rookie team top five in the league. Um, he started a whole bunch of games for us. Steve had troubles getting him off the floor. I mean, he had to have him on the floor. He was so good. He does so many things well. He's ultra confident. He's got an NBA body. He can get wherever he wants. He obviously can shoot threes. He can drive. He can pass. I mean, what can he do? We're really excited. We think we've got a, a future all-star. So they believe they have a future all-star in pods. I know how Laker feels about Kaminga. He loves Kaminga. Loves Kaminga. But as Fred and Richmond called us, he brought up Moses Moody. Mm -hmm. He's been the forgotten youngster in this entire equation, Shasky. We like Moses Moody. Every time he gets into the game, I, I just go back to the Sacramento game. He's having a great game, and I even admit it, even though I was a Clay apologist, Clay probably shouldn't have finished that game. Steve went back to Wiggins and Clay, and Moody got benched, and he was having a ball game. What about Moses Moody? Where is he at? Where is he like? Anybody even care about Moses Moody? It just feels like he had opportunities to get his mark on this team and, and get into the rotation. Again, I'm just, I'm yeah, just no, I hear you from I hear from you. like a practice standpoint, yeah. not a game a but, game. But they don't even practice much during the season. Well, Bonte, then why did he fall out of favor? I have no idea. I, I, That's a million dollar question. I, well, it, it feels like whatever Pajemski has done internally, externally at practices, at games with the vets, coaching staff, they all like him. And it just feels like that Moses Moody had opportunities to get some of the Pajemski minutes, and he never sees those opportunities. Now, I think he was pretty good for the most part. Do I think he's Iguodala to the caller on the other side? No. Iggy is one of the best athletes the game yeah. has ever seen. I know we got older Iggy, but like, remember what no. young Iggy was. He's a great defender. And yeah, Defensively, IQ, passing-wise, right. th there's a variety of areas where Iggy is... is Higher on the pecking order. He was in a slam dunk contest yeah. for crying out loud. Shows but, how athletic he was. But I do think that Mo Moses Moody is a high IQ player. I do think that Moses Moody is an above average defender. I do. I think all. Of, I actually think he has a very quick shot. I think he has a good shot when it's right. rolling. He hasn't played long enough for me to so, know whether he's a good shooter or not. People are going to point to a lot of his raw stats, and I'm like. Yeah, but what would he look like if he just got two weeks or three weeks yeah. of thirty-two minutes a game? I'm dying to see that. I'm dying to see I that. I think the numbers would be better. I, I'm dying to see that. Now, here's the thing about practice, because Steve Kerr's touched on this. It's tough to have practice time during the season. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you go down to the court. That's why we love going to training camp. You find out a little information. You find out what's going on. During an NBA season, teams don't necessarily practice. They have a bunch of shoot-arounds. They go over film. and They go over quick game plan. And then you go about your business. There's a lot of individual work, but there's not a lot of, hey, let's go five on five, hard scrimmage, let's go. Let's see what you got. That doesn't really happen in season anymore. It doesn't happen at all. Maybe a Coach Thibodeau team, mm -hmm. but not with the go to State Warriors. So you're not able to see how a guy's getting better. Like, what if these guys are going at Clay Thompson during the season? It's like, okay, Clay, yeah, you're only playing 20 minutes a game. Moody deserves 30 or whatnot. We don't see that because they don't practice much during the season. So, look, Clay's going to leave. He's That's 30 minutes a game that's available. Chris Paul, what is it, 25 minutes a game, mm -hmm. whatever it is, that's available. I do believe Moody has an opportunity to shine out, but nobody's talking about him. And I think, you know what, knowing who Moses Moody is, all the quotes, he's mature beyond his age, he's a youngster. We all forget how young he is because of the way he carries himself. I bet you Moses Moody is working his ass off right now saying, nobody's talking about me. Well, I'm going to come in training camp and I'm going to compete because Steve Kerr said it, three spots are open. We know Draymond and Steph are going to start. Who's going to start? Who's going to start the other three spots? I think Mo I think Moses Moody has a golden opportunity to kind of come out of nowhere and say, "Hey, guys, remember me? I was a first round pick too." So Kavon Looney's someone I think a lot about. Where everyone sees like he brings something to the table, right? And at first, though, when we when the Warriors drafted him, we all had high hopes, and he didn't play. Like I, I forgot about him. I think most Warrior did. fans forgot about him. We all and did. then it took till the fourth, for me, till the fourth year when they went to the finals against the Raptors. Yep. 
That was when, oh, wow, like Looney is someone you can't get rid of. He yep. can switch onto the smaller players. He's well, much tougher than we give him credit for. He fits the ball movement stuff. He screens off ball. Well, I was going to say that 2018 Western Conference Finals against the Rockets. Remember the Rockets ran pick and roll all day with James Harden and Chris exactly. Paul. And it's like, wait, Looney's on an island with Chris he Paul and James job. Harden? And he did a tremendous job. Then he got hurt. Yeah. Because remember Kawhi plowed uh -huh. into him, almost broke his shoulder, and he gutted it out in those mm -hmm. finals. It's like, wait. There might be a player in Moses Moody. Well, that's where, you mean in Kavon Looney? Go ahead. Go there ahead. might be a player in Kavon Looney, not Moses yeah. Moody. Yeah. And and yes, and so where I'm going as it, year four, 22 years old, that's when we kind of saw Looney. And it yep. was more toward the middle to end of that year where he's like, boom, he popped. And you look up now, and he's been with the team for a long time. Here's Steve Caron with Willard Gibbs. Sorry, I'm Shasky. hoping yeah. Moody does. Yeah, no, I'm hoping that too because I think Moody's got a shot here. We'll get to Chucky and Oakley in just a second. But here's Steve Kerr back on April 17th with Willard and Gibbs. Day after the season ended. Day after the season ended. Kerr on Moody's role. He was probably the guy who went in and out of the rotation the most. Some of that was just the log jam in front of him, you know, between uh, JK and Wiggs and Clay and Harry Payton. You know, we had a lot of guys who were just in front of Moses. So it's not easy to, I mean, as a coach, you can't play all those guys. And so Moses took the brunt of that and handled it really well. But uh, he's uh, he's a guy who needs his opportunity to uh, to really you know, step forward and become an everyday contributor, maybe even a starter. You know, that opportunity, part of that comes from our side, but part of it comes from his side too, um, you know, emerging and, and grasping that role and running with it like Brandon Podemski did this year. So he's got to run with the opportunity. And the Warriors have to make a decision on him. Remember, it's not just Jonathan Kaminga up for an extension. Moses Moody is too. What happened with with Looney that year? He was up for uh, they picked up his fourth year option, and then they they let the season kind of play out, yeah. and then they were really up against the cap. Yeah. It was different CBA. He's a free agent. He's and, a free agent, and they were able to bring him back for the cheap. They were able and to they bring him back for the cheap. The yeah, time. something like that. Because I remember talking to Stately about it. Yeah, and there was teams rumored to be on him. I think the Brooklyn Nets were really yeah. in on Looney. And then his market just soured. Yeah, because they were like, "Wow, a big who could switch on the guards. Yeah. Wow, this is a valuable asset in the NBA." And then his market to sour, which helped to go to State Warriors out, helped to win a fourth championship. And now Looney at his bargain. I still got high hopes for Looney next season. Well, so I guess to my point is, is like, I don't think Moody is going to command top dollar. I, if you look around with the just, right. like if Malik Monk's only making 18 million, it's not like somebody's going to come out of the woodworks right. and be like, oh yeah, we're giving him $20 million yeah, no, a no year. Doubt. So we don't know I, who he is yet. Yeah, exactly. So I think it behooves all parties either sign something relatively affordable now yep. on like a two-year extension or you kind of play the year out. I would, I think they're going to play it yeah, out. Yeah, I think you kind of play it you out. play with it out and he's a restricted free agent yeah, and then you can exactly. match whatever team offers him. You may come out cheaper that way yeah. with Moses Booty. I want to see what happens but with Moses But I'm not Moody ready to give up on him, I guess I'm, is where no, I'm... But I don't have him... Like, I don't have him carved out in a specific role, you know, but, I, but I'm still... I'm open-minded to seeing what he can do. He's going to get an opportunity this season. Gary Payton II has proven that He's going to have some bumps in the roads when it comes to keeping his body right. Is he going to be in the lineup every single game? DeAnthony Melton's coming off a serious back injury. Where's he going to be at health wise? Well, I think Potts is a too. smaller guy. He's a smaller guard. You know what I'm saying? Moody's six five, six six. I mean, come on. Well, I, I see what everyone sees with GP two and all the good he brings to the table, but it has come at the expense of Moses Moody. And and you can say Kaminga and, and Kaminga, but you can say Joe. You know they kind of play different roles. No, only five guys can play, right. right? And only so many guys can play on the court. I just think that whatever defense that you get from GP two, there is this offensive uh, deficiency that people don't account for. And I think that Moses, though not the defender and the scrapper that GP two is, and and can win a lot of like hustle plays that pop on TV. I think Mo Moses Moody can give them more balance on both ends of the floor. Well, and that's something I don't think they've explored well, enough. I, I just look at the team and I look at what may happen and who's going to be in the lineup and who's going to be out of the lineup. And to your point about GP two, he plays in that dunker spot, which kind of negates Jonathan Kaminga because I can, I think Jonathan Kaminga could be really good in that dunker spot. Uh, when well, you think Sam Coyne is going to join us at 1 o'clock for CBS Sports, and he wrote in his article, man, that short roll when Draymond Green's rolling to the basket and Kaminga's coming baseline for that jam that we always saw with Draymond and Iguodala, that could be Kaminga right there. GP2 offensively 
takes that away from Kaminga. I would rather see Kaminga in the short corner shooting the threes in GP2 right now. I don't know where GP2 is. Hell, GP2 may be in trade talks, for crying out loud, because he has an expiring contract. That's valuable in today's NBA game. But I do think Moody will get a chance because it is GP2. It is Pot, DeAnthony Melton. Guys, hell, we don't even know if Curry. Is Curry going to play 70 games this year coming off an Olympic run? We have no idea. So I do think there's going to be an opportunity for Moses Moody, especially with Clay out the window. Clay Thompson is gone now in Dallas. Chris Paul's gone. He's in San Antonio. I think I think Moody will get an opportunity to shine, and I think we're forgetting about him. This is a great opportunity for Moses Moody this season. You know, it's it's so funny how when we have these conversations, like everybody who's on the trade everything and anything to keep Steph, you know, in the contention of a title, they they're just so short sighted on a lot of these decisions and a lot of these deals. And it's like, it, it sounds great, and it make it, it, it you well, just remarketed, you know, but you just you sound really smart and like you're trying to win it all in the now. But at some point, like you do have to pay the piper. And I saw this with the San Francisco Giants, where the Giants kept going in and kept going in and kept going in and kept all their favorite players together. And at some point, you have to go through an even longer build back up. And I look at how the Giants fans have responded to that with utter apathy. And I feel like the Warrior fans that are out here, oh, I, you go all in for Steph, are going to be the first to bail when they have a prolonged absence of the playoffs and aren't going to be willing to go through any rebuild. They're just, well, it's almost unreasonable because the, the cycle credit. of sports, yeah. you're just but never going to be on top at all. Give the Warriors credit, though. They didn't go the Giants route. No, they didn't. If they went the Giants route, Clay Thompson would be here on a big time deal. It would have been a be Brandon Bell two second, or three they, year deal. They'd yes. be in the second April. And, right. and everybody talked right. about the nostalgic tour. The Warriors made the tough decision, an emotional decision. We're going to go do other things first. We'll come back to you. The Giants did the complete opposite. Doesn't it feel like the McCutcheon and Longoria deals are equivalent to the Laurie Marketing deal right now? Where it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, he makes I, you a little better, but how much I, better? I think you could be better with this team right now than if you had Laurie Marketing by giving up all those assets for yeah, Larry Marketing. That's what I'm Marketing. saying. It costs too Larry much. Larry Marketing. I, I, I just, I'm just not the biggest fan of Larry Marketing. I don't know what the assumption is about Larry Marketing. I really don't. He's a good player. But if you're giving up Kaminga pods and Moody and picks, I'm good. I've told you this from day one. I'm good. By the way, all guests on 9570 game appear on the River Islands guest line. Isn't it time for you to discover the islands? River Islands in Lathrop. 